okay, YouTube's it got this amazing algorithm. They were able to suggest this video to me. And I just couldn't resist it to jump in and see what this is all about. So this is a mentor, uh, one of the offspring of the mentor. And this is the mentor's mentor, mentor. I found this guy, YouTube brought him to me. So I claim no uh, intent on trolling this guy. It just happens naturally. Can't resist it. Only three order block blocks you need to know. Because I thought, if I just knew one, I'd be so fucking happy. But it's really about not having a single entry point. In my opinion, it's about scaling in and scaling out. And life is not a binary situation. Although, I mean, real life is, see. The markets are choppy and they're, they go uh, sideways and people don't like that. If it's not a big enough move to kick over their profit level, then, then it's a problem, obviously. Right? Everybody has this need to make uh, X. What is the uh, risk per week, I would say? Uh, pick a number, you know. You risk $500 a week trading. Uh, what is your threshold for pain? I, this is really comes down to, unfortunately. You, what, how much stress can you handle financially of a fluctuating position? The position you're in, the bigger it is, the more um, apparent it is if the market should go against you. You certainly love it when it's going your, your way. Does this order block shit solve that problem? Not really. So it gives you an entry point, supposedly, but fucking A. If you just put a linear grid in, let's face it, okay, you don't have to be a fucking rocket scientist here, okay? If you placed orders that lasted 24 fucking hours, 10 pips apart on the euro dollar, it is possible to get filled on. $48,000 position, 48 single micro lots, and blow up the account. If there's not enough fucking money in the account and the stops are not staggered, hopefully, so you scale out, right? You don't even need to know where the market's going to make money, which is a very disturbing thought that it, uh, was Mark Douglas said this, and I was pissed when he said that. I said, dude, you must be retarded now. Like, you are fucking... I paid to come to this course, and you're telling me that I don't have to know where the market's going to make money? That That's ridiculous. But if you're hedging, or if you've got this... Um, where you're going to lock in a profit, if you can do that, the money management's going to make it so you don't really have to know where the market's going because your ratios are that good and your trade frequency is right. Yes, you could bleed your account to death if you over trade it. So there's, there's so many variables. It's like a three, it's like a tripod. There's so much angles going on to your supposed goal is to make a lot of money or to make consistent money. But that's, that's a ridiculous term too, because if you, if you go look at three years of somebody making money, well, on average, they make, uh, fuck, put a 50-period moving average on their equity curve, and it looks like, oh, this is very stable. Now, if you looked at the person's losses, only their losses, and you never saw their wins, you'd think, oh, my God, this guy, what? how could he fuck this shit up? The robot's going to do worse, um, quite possibly. Some guy posted this thing telling me that uh, my... Uh, he didn't even say what the robot was, but the theory of the entry system, but he said the euro versus the pound, you're just not going to be able to build a robot on there or something, or it doesn't, whatever. And so um, I didn't even know what this, the uh, style of trading that was he was talking about, but uh, he had some Bitcoin bot that, I don't know if he curve fit it, but it made like this 45 degree money angle. Now, I don't even know uh, if there's a fixed, um, spread on the Bitcoin, but that would matter too, right? So when you go into the weekend, does it spread on the um, Bitcoin get so wide? If you back test that, does it include the widening of the spread? Now this is, you know, if it does, then 
you're probably going to blow, you're probably not going to make this money. I don't even know how these people are coming up with this shit, but he's got like 17 uh, subscribers on the YouTube. So I come across this guy who's got um, 650 subscribers and he's the new kid on the block. Like he's order block. I'm assuming is ICT stuff. So I couldn't resist. And when it says smart money concepts, it doesn't get any better than that. And what doesn't get any really better than that is just saying instead of smart money concepts, which is, you know, that's too much work. You know how much work it is to talk, you know? So everything's got to be th three letters now. So when you see stuff like S M C, in fact, my license plate, I made so much fucking money using these order blocks. The license plate of my Ferrari and my F40 has the license plate is in glitter and it says S M C. I'm just, I'm just saying, just putting that out there. So yeah, this is, I couldn't resist this guy. So let's listen to his, um, he's, he's really, uh, people love him to death and he loves that he can tell you this stuff, but I think it's the most hilarious nomenclature. This, all these buzzwords are so hysterical because I don't think I only got five minutes and I had to back it up. I don't think he ever really describes how, like, oh, I put this trade on. See this? I'm in here, like, I'm really big here, and we're in this trade, and it's going to go this way. And oh, I guess we're not going to, it's not going to work out. Oopsie. I mean, I, I don't really hear anybody admitting to the fuck up this that every system's capable of being totally um, overtraded, right? For, from that standpoint, it could, it could be totally uh, screwed up. But here's here's the uh, the mentor's mentor. Yes, hello everyone. Welcome to my well, hello yourself. Second video on YouTube. I can't just... <laughs> YouTube. Um, so after the feedback of the last one, a lot of you guys, you know, gave me feedback on both the YouTube comments and also on my Instagram DMs as well, just telling me Wow, tell me I'm just the greatest guy in the world. Yeah, keep it up. Yeah, keep it up, man. Keep it going. Obviously, there's a few things that you all highlighted. So like technical and fundamental analysis, but I'm gonna continue a bit on with the technical first. Uh, for the next few videos and then obviously get into fundamentals later on uh, but apart from that guys let's get straight into it so what i want to look at in this video is pretty straightforward there's the three main types of order blocks so when it comes to smart money concepts or um smart money trading whether it's supply and demand whatever smart it smart money trading or how about smart money uh, drawing trend lines smart smart trend lines it may be it's something that you can easily pick up on YouTube, but what you realize is when you are researching this, uh, when it comes to order blocks, you start to realize that, you know, it looks very straightforward um, in theory, but when you look on the charts, it's not always as clean as the nice order block that you want to see, you know, that big up move before the down move. Yeah, that now, that uh, for this up, video, I'm not going to get into the whole thing. That big up move before the down move. I'm, I'm I'm liking what you're saying there. I get you there. Yeah, that big up move before the down move. Yeah, and then we, we get in. I mean, is this where we get in the trade or is this where we go the other way? Theory of order blocks. I'll leave that for another time. Order blocks. But for now, I just want to look at the three main types. Yeah. So uh, for a lot of this content, I'm going to take it from my actual course. So this is what I teach um, all of my... This actual course, and this is what he teaches. So 650 subscribers are amazing. It's just amazing. So I guess this is the, the, uh, the next generation of ICTers. My students in my mentorship. My students in my mentorship. Because you know, I like to teach. Hey, I should get into this. Hey, kids. Um, see this order block over here is what we're going to do here. See, we're going to put like a spike arrestor in there. We'll put some orders in there and stuff. This is one of the lessons that we have in the first part in this first part. Now this is part one of part five of part eight of part six section of technicals. So yeah, let's get straight into it. Straight into it. We're going to get straight into it before. Are we ever going to get straight into it? So the first type. I think he's like, he's like a Brooklyn uh, British guy. Order block type one with entries. Now, just as a precursor to all of this. A precursor. Now that'd be, if you put something before your cursor or after your precursor. Uh, I want to quickly explain market structure. Explain. Explain. You got some explaining to do, buddy. Retail logic. Wait a minute. Are you making fun of me, son? I got a retail account. You making fun of me? In terms of retail logic and then smart money concepts logic. Oh, smart money concepts. Oh, that's, that's, that's that SMC shit logic. Oh, yeah. 
Retail logic no good. Oh my downtrend. Okay, we're in a downtrend. I got you, got you on listening so far. So what retail will have you thinking is Have me thinking? What you think in their own retail market, huh? Hey guys. When you're in a downtrend, what you yeah. want to be looking for yeah. is whether you're in uptrend or downtrend, it's support and resistance. Yeah. I'm with you on that, man. However, when it comes to smart money concepts, what you're actually looking for is certain points of interest. And then within them points of interest, points of interest is... that's where you're going to find the order blocks. Order blocks. I got gotcha. you. Oof. Got a top become a bottom there, but it's a top on a, on a bar against the bottom and closing. This kind of makes you think about this is a closing price. This is perfect structure. Down, zigzag. I'm going to assume that this is not even a fucking bar in here. But this is just, but this, this makes you think, okay, what time frame is he on? This is we got three bars. I'm going to say five bars down. It's like, like an hourly chart. So this price pulse is like a little bigger by a little bit, right? I'm just totally triggered. And then I'm like, okay, but dude, okay, we're going to load the wagon here on this one fucking trade. You make a living like that? That was a fucking entry like that. Fucking A. Now these order blocks is what you want to be entering off. Your stop loss will be just above. Okay, dude, well, let me tell you something. You just blew your whole smart money concept just now. This is what's so hysterical about this shit, dude. If you're going to tell me, you're going to stop up here and you're waiting for the market to come back here and get order block entry. We're going to load the wagon here, see? And what we're going to get out down here, see? Because we know that's why we drew the line. That's a target, see? Here's our risk to reward ratio. We're just going to risk a little bit up here to make all this right. Okay. And like, how big is this trade? What time frame is this a 15 minute chart? What about this smart money concept? This is why this is going to defeat this. I got to sell them it up here. When they take your stop out, which they do half the time. Like he doesn't even show a wick on there, but he's got the he's got the order blocks in here. So he, he, why this is harebrained is that this whole area is a fucking order block. Like what the fuck, dude? I hear in the monthly chart and you're looking at a one minute chart. How many order blocks on that same fucking instrument do you think exist? As you scroll through the one minute fucking data over 12 months of data, as you come to the end of the year here, you think about, holy fuck, what does the yearly candlesticks look like? And I don't have a yearly chart. I wish MetaTrader went to yearly. I'm sure you can make a synthetic one, but I should go look at the monthly, the yearly candlesticks on giant stuff's been around for a long time now you can look at gold i mean a lot of these things have been around for a long time so if you're into the candlestick which includes the open the high low close and this dramatic form with the wick being opposite the most psychotic thing right now you're looking at uh on the weekly euro dollar you've got four dojis an engulf and a doji it's ridiculous you are down in the in the bilge of prices so to me it's a giant swing trade opportunity now on the 15 minute chart on this order block shit your fingers on the trigger it's coming up into here you're gonna you get you're all gonna pull the trigger here or you go well, fucking a when the market's down here you should have a fucking sell limit here and just walk away i mean okay smart money logic dude i mean what and what's this retail logic what what you're you how what the fuck is he talking about how what, what this is more precise optimal trade entry bullshit dude i i fucking kill you as a retail trader i fuck dude i start selling here on limits if it's down here if this is the trap under the floor, so there's a guy buying down here and he's negating the best fucking retail dumb shit trade is to, to, to 
if, if there's a guy with a stop here, supposedly, you put a limit there and you buy his stop and it goes rocketing up to here. And there's resi- it is really resistance. It is. But it might wick into it. You cannot tell me. So it is so, this is, you know, this is the argument from I'm a victim of uh, confirmation, I suppose. I don't even know what he's talking about here, but. You could be the guy that put a cell stop here and they crash through the floor and you trail your stop and that's a winning trade. They're all fucking winning trades. If you trade at their proper frequency and and, and the spread's not going to destroy your profit margin. If the spread gets to be half the trade, you're fucked. You can't trade with three pip stops, dude. (laughs) I mean, if the spread is one fixed, if it was a one, there's, I don't think anybody's got a one pip fix, maybe Cedar FX or something, but you, you still got to make four pips and how many tickets, how big are the tickets? When do you pull the trigger? Are you trading at the market? Are these stop entries? And if the market's rocketing up, they could be stop entries. You're five pips away. You're one pip away from current price. I wrote a script. I used to run it at this place called, um, light Forex, which is SIG. And, and, and I put buy stops into it and it was a, a nano account and the market would take off and rip through these tickets. They'd fill my buy stops. It was a complete retail goober entry fucking system if there ever was. And when the market explodes, this thing would rip. It would just make a, a, a ton of money ratio wise, not a ton of money, money, but ratio, for what we risking. Shit, they were $300 tickets instead of a one case or $300 in a cluster. And you're already up like two bucks. Now, it doesn't sound like much, but this is a script on a hotkey and you just keep launching it, right? So you've stacked up about, I don't know, 100K in front of the market. So all the market has to do is trip into this goober zone. Once it goes into the vacuum, I'm not saying, I'm not describing that. When I talk about, the way I'm trading it is I'm placing limits and letting the market come to me. I'm not saying you can't trade like a fucking goober and get in because the market's thrusting and they're filling you or you're even chasing at the market. But that robot, okay, if you stack up buy stops and the market busts through this wall of shit and it fills you and you scalp out of the gate, you're out 50%. The rest just goes in the, at the end of that price pulse in two hours. It doesn't matter which direction. This is why direction doesn't matter because you could put a equal hedge breakout on and it's going to cost you about 20% or 30%, but this is going to ensure that you're really talking about, I don't care, I don't care where the market goes. I just know it can't go sideways forever. You could trade this bursting um, strategy where the this execution strategy, not just the, oh, do I buy or sell? Because you can't just think like that. I can't because it doesn't make sense in this day and age where you can fucking hit a button and stack up 80 K in front of the market. So when it's, once it trips, it's like you're in it by default, you don't have to think about it. Like, Oh, should I hurry up? And you couldn't pull the trigger fast enough at the market. And your, your slippage on your stops, your, your market order slippage would be worse than the stops getting filled in a big uh, gust of price pulse through the floor or through the ceiling and you get picked up and you cash out and boom, boom, boom. And that's the trade. And that system runs, I would say exclusively, like this is how you make money. You have to have exclusive systems, right? It's just like, you can't just go, Oh, well I'm going to, uh, Hmm. Yeah. There's an order block here. Hey, Joe, uh, I think we get in right here, right? I mean, I, maybe you are maybe actually, I guess if you have the good ratios and you consistently can see the fucking opportunity, but are you really going to babysit the fucking 15 minute chart? Honestly, who's doing this trade complete? So show me the video. Oh yeah. So it's down here. Okay. I'm going to, I've done videos where I'm up all night. I've done three hour video of just Marcus just standing still or something's happening at FOMC, but you know, it trading's boring as fuck. And, um, hindsight here, you know, as you look through the structures, what is the trade you even put on here? I'm already complaining and I haven't heard his answer, but I had two minutes in, I couldn't resist just getting angry about it, but it is about entry. You're either getting in at the market. You're chasing the market. Oh, it's going up. It's going up. Okay. Hurry up. Bye, bye, bye. Or you got buy stops that are getting filled because it's, it's just going into it and you're just going with the flow. It's very Zen or, 
Every time it pulled back, you had trailing buy limits beneath the market. So every stab down was a place to gather a long position because you perceive that in the end, in the fucking end of 80% noise, 20% price burst, that you're going to be right about that direction. It's going to pay off for you to accumulate on every fucking rally here. You're just going to sell every fucking up rail dude if you really think this is going down because your your moving average says this you got to take every fucking sell that's overbought you can't and you got to pick a stop that's appropriate for the instrument you're trading on the time frame you're trading that's all you got to fucking do now what people can't tolerate is selling it and seeing it in their favor and they come back here are you really going to put another sell on it takes a special person i think in a sense to you're asking to get slapped in the face again, like, but if you only sell on limits up here, actually, I would start selling all limits here. You're shading an area with well, a smart money uh, or this alt optimal trade entry. I did a video about this. How stupid this is uh, that there's only one place to get in. You mean there's only one guy out there that knows the exact turning point and he's in a, he's in a van without windows. There's only one guy that knows where the fucking market's going to turn around kidding right no i mean they're not apparently but that's the frustration with this fucking approach i haven't got this far but i think we'll go about uh through the video <laughs> you can tune out anytime my video is 21 minutes he's in two minutes okay so maybe i talk over him a little bit <laughs> come on can't resist however if it's for we have a we, I, I just Taken by his accent, I feel like I can't get mad at the order block. Uh, his accent's too cute. Retail, as you can see. Retail, you can see. Uh, in my little diagram there. In the diagram there. Yeah, I don't forget to. Yeah. Your stop loss is going to be much wider. He'll be above this whole area. Dude. <laughs> I mean, so if you put on two tickets with a, a 50 pip stop, it's the same as one ticket with a 100 pip stop of twice the size so what would you rather do would you rather say you know what i got a hundred bucks let me put instead of putting on one fucking trade for a hundred dollar risk how about i put on four trades 25 bucks per risk maybe one stopped out the other guys hold in the ratios are good i retain what i would normally do is fuck up the precise order block i guess that wasn't the order block oh shit really no no re kidding so as the market moves, you should see this carny fuck that sent me this threatening letter. How he's going to sue me because I said a, I said the word harmonic trade pattern and he fucking lost his mind. So I was watching him in his video and I made a video about him and everything. I think YouTube made me, made me tear it down, but he's got this fucking indicator that shows you a projected Gartley pattern harmonic. Okay, that's cute, but dude, it updates every fucking hour and it's marching out in front of the market and recalculating that. It's not written in stone, but we, what we know is written in stone is looking back into the vacuum. So when you watch the euro, I don't know if anybody watched the euro, it'll take out new highs this week, but when it did, I was watching the tick chart on two brokers, and I'll tell you, man, when it hits that fucking old high from last week, Man, it gets perky, you know. It it, it it just you, it's a screaming tick chart. It is just slippage is just brutal at that level. There's definitely some type of what this guy says, um, a very particular price uh, action up there. And when it comes to all the blocks, you can really refine your uh, your entry points. Refine your entry points. I just don't even believe this is the way to go. What that means is that. You're going to just take these very select trades with a giant position. You got to make that position bigger and maybe you scale out. So ICT gets into a giant position. I saw some trade he did. It was harebrained. I mean, why would you post a bad trade of this theory? He posts this, this thing. I'm like, dude, what are you kidding? You're fucking, you but maybe he doesn't mind. This is a fake account, by the way. And no, no talking over it. No explaining. Just typing shit on the screen. That a lot of these fucking ICT sycophant uh, guys are just all, well, the same thing. I play music and I just draw on the chart. A little, 
little notes and messages. And essentially, you just get much higher risk to reward than also you. Yeah. Okay. We all know that, right? Be better ratios make more money. Start to understand market structure a lot better as well. So when it comes to the first one, we have the standard order block. Now, this is pretty much what you find across YouTube, internet, wherever you may look for smart money concepts this is what you're going to be finding. Okay. He's got a range here. I don't know what the spread is, but we don't see the bid and ask. If this is the bid and ask right here, then and that's the 15 minute chart. He's not saying, oh, fuck, it doesn't matter, dude. Here. This is why it doesn't matter. And this is why you'll make more money, I think, if you give the market some room. Don't be so tight on it, dude. If I put a sell limit here, which I wouldn't because I perceive this vacuum as being serious. It, the sheer, so when you take out this floor and you go gushing down, by the way, um, I don't know what's to the left of this thing, but when the market calms down, here's the trend traders are coming in, right? The people that are on a, on a moving average, it just so happens to perfectly fit. I think we could see how this would be the golden opportunity for like an eight period moving average. Oh, look, I, I got honey. We bought here and got reversal. But you know, this trade's working out really good. And like, oh, look at, well, boom, we made money. So there's the retracement guys on that trade. This, when you're looking for stuff like this, man, and the market, yeah, this trade, okay, but dude, there's so many trades in here. Look how they stopped out the guy that was like, oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to get in here and what the news come out rip <laughs> now the, what I was just describing before, what if you got buy stops on this shit, dude, it comes plunging down. Somebody was I was talking to a guy on the, on discord about this. I said, yeah, when I used to trade the news like this, when the news came out and this market goes down, I'm dropping 15 minute. Imagine this is a 15 minute chart. 15 minute expirations and there's their buy stops and they last 15 minutes and I keep dropping them and I keep pressing a button and every 15 minutes dude it comes down I am hitting the buy stop I'm hitting the, and then we get filled and I'm long because it is a, a confirmation on new highs entry in the most crudest form you can possibly get I bet there's a robot you could turn on when this news comes out and the market goes rocketing down and all it does is cancel replays. And what it also does is it doubles the position. I mean, it adds one more contract. So it'd be buy stop, uh, buy stop. Now it's a 2K. Now it's a 3K. Now it's a 4K. Now it's a 5K. Now it's a 6K. Now it's an 8K. You get filled. You're up. Now, if you wait for it to come back to any one of these order blocks, every fucking body is an order block. Dude, every... There's so many fucking order blocks in this chart, you could shit your pants. So, if you consider every floor a place to... Um, it's going to be triggered. But since you canceled and replaced all these tickets, you could have left the tickets there, by the way. You could have done a... This one lasts for a half hour. This one lasts for an hour. I don't like to get in like that, which means you would have got filled on these old buy stops that are still lingering. This is why expiration dates are critical to trading. This is why they have good till canceled shit, dude. This is how these things run. They're auctions for fucking sake. There's only so much time people are going in. If there's buy stops stacked up here, that's the trigger, the fuel of this fucking thing. It's not some big fat, smart money dumb shit pulling the buy button or you got so many buy limits down here that it it repels off of this yeah that's some of it but it's the cracking of this if you sold a 1k on a limit instead so backing up into the same theory that's why these theories are just you still gotta have a fucking trade plan i'm so sorry but you gotta have a trade plan you could instead of putting buy Stops are stacking up. By the way, like I said, if you really take it to an extreme, you buy a, you have a buy stop for 2K, 4K, 6, 8, 12. You're doing 2K add-ons. When you get down here, 
and hopefully this is a five minute chart by the way imagine this is a one minute chart and the news comes out you can't make a script that lasts for one minute though so on the 15 minute chart that is the the shortest expiration you can have an mt4 that i've seen brokers usually won't take a five minute expiration because they're like dude it's four minutes after you drop it it's already four we're already four minutes in what are you fucking you're gonna choke our servers with your bullshit trade plans so in other words also these trade plans are I guess not broker friendly though. They've denied me putting too many limits in because they tell me they're fake orders. <laughs> I didn't do it. Okay, I, I guess I did. I, I put it on a lot of instruments. Is what I did. I, I actually launched. I did launch them on twelve instruments and all these tickets, you know. And uh, so you can't uh, punish a retail broker, but um, yeah, I'm not, dude. I don't. I'm not. I don't. I'm not trading on zero margins, so it's not like uh, I'm going to, uh, like, it's, you're trying to exploit the the volatility without getting crushed. So when it's going your way, you want to be cashing out of something, because even on this burst up, so if you have buy stop stacked up here, or, or you're still long from here, once this starts to go smashing up, you can also take the opposite trade. Of course, you're not going to make this grandiose money you're going to soften your losses and you're going to soften your profits equally when you start to get into where you're making 20 percent you know 30 percent these are like low numbers i, I figure right if you're if you're good at trading making 30 percent is kind of like hey you're, you're pretty, pretty good um better than the guy with 10 percent in the bank and it's just sitting there and uh trying to keep up with inflation the idea that you're trading you're making enough you can stock some away you got on the side and you build the account and if you want to do um experiment uh you get another account get a demo account you sit there and you just do it and do it and do it there's really no and it, it's always going to be better if you can handle the pain of uh, uh unless you like it which you know you, you gotta love the uh um the fact that you don't know where the market's going. If you knew where it was going, it gets to be boring, like a Twilight Zone episode. You know, you go to hell, or you win every time when you go to hell. It makes it kind of boring. What's where's the challenge? So we like a challenge. You know, speaking for angry people like myself, but you know, like a good challenge. Uh, come here, fucker. Let me show you something. Fire Marshal Bill trades forex. If you're in a downtrend, it's the last up candle. Bef Less up candle. The last up candle, if you're in a downtrend, how we know it's the last up candle? That's, I would say it's a major up candle. And this is the argument that you're coming back to the floor that you took out. Now, you might call that an order block, but I would be willing to sell on limits right up under the floor. He's got this special little thing, Mark. Dude, it don't, it don't matter. In fact, like I said, sell a 1K, a 3K, an 8K, a 16K. A 32k, a, um, a 48k, a 50k. You never filled in the 50k. The market rockets up in. You know that you know that it's possible. It may not make it all the way up there. And if you got targets on this ticket to get out here, and you got a cluster in, that's why I'm gonna just put 1ks in to be honest with you, because I can put 48k in here like this in a high res thing, and I got different exits, and I can. There's so much more flexibility in a mesh system than there is in a singularity system like this fucking optimal trade entry, one trick pony, order block bullshit entries, which is just ridiculous. A trend trader is going to buy these two pullbacks if he thinks the trend is reversing here because we just made a higher high, I guess you wait for the ultimate higher high, but this is the first fucking higher high. Dude, the first time it takes out a wick. It's making higher highs right here. This is what kills me about these people. See, these swing highs, it's making higher highs. But dude, it's making higher highs like all in here. Every fucking... It's which higher highs are you talking about? Which fucking order block are you talking about? It's so ridiculous. Look at this beautiful little cell. The, the only bullish candle in this fucking rip down. So is this a trend? Is this a trend? Is 
this a trend? I'm sure this is a trend on the one-minute chart. If this is a 15-minute chart, I'm supposing it is, if you're going to do the order box, right? Yeah, there's a 30-second chart in here that looks gorgeous. It's probably draw a channel on it. It probably looks just like this. I'm going to tell you what's going on inside some of these candles. It's like, like this. It's like a little zigzaggy. But i, I got to hear a straight plan. It's too much fun to just look at these charts. I don't do charts. This is the classical black and white candlesticks. This is right from my course, my mentorship. Did I tell you I have a mentorship? Yeah. You watch my videos, and if you don't blow your brains out, then, yeah, you pass the course. You don't have to pay. Before the down move. Now, it doesn't really matter on the size of it or, you know, the colors. You can keep everything in, in black if you wanted to. Ooh, I like it, though. But it's pretty much the last up candle before the down move. The last up candle before the down move. I thought this was the last. See, this kind of, this logic, when people say the rules like this, is ICT guy students write these journals about, let me be the last up move before the down move. Uh, sorry, buddy, but this would be the last up move before the down move. Is the, the last up move before the down move? Like, I, we're, we're talking about this? This little, ba we're waiting for this little baby pullback here? Okay, I guess so. There's another up move here at last up move. Well, here's the last big up move. He, he was talking about that big up move before the down move earlier. So when you when you when you get these rule lists that are so like this what somebody's asked me about the Albert Brooks. The reason why I don't like it is because people say stuff like, Well, in the morning when it when it breaks out and it moves up, there's a breakout to the upside, the gaps like gaps fill or gaps don't fill sometimes it fills sometimes it don't what you do when to do that and then uh, what we did do when there's a gap in the market is we come back in we wait about five and a half minutes we look and see how our coffee's doing and if we look at the market you know, we get in typically right there about <laughs> what the fuck is this rule list well, if I wake up and I got the sniffles, I don't trade. I remember this um, book I had. There's this course I was watching on videotape. had to buy tapes. And they say, yeah, if you don't feel good, don't trade. I'm like, God, I think I'd just be like, I guess if I don't feel um, good, I'm not going to play my guitar. But I figure if, if I don't feel good, I go to work. I mean, I would just go to, if I had something I had to do, I'd just do it. Sick or not. But apparently, this is the idea that you got to be in perfect condition and stuff to trade. I don't know. I mean, there's probably guys with a with a, whis a glass of whiskey trading, very relaxed. I don't know how much so that takes for that. It's not like a, it's not like brain surgery. That order block theory sure is it hurt my noggin. <laughs> So what this is essentially, what this is essentially, I'm not explaining it to you now. Now sit, sit down. I want you to hear this. Just to quickly explain, quickly explain, we'll get right into it. And the, the whole theory behind it is it's the manipulation before moving down. The manipulation. So, but dude, back up a few candles. You missed the ultimate manipulation. And this is probably contextually missing is the stop hunt that probably so-called stop hunt liquidity wick that probably spiked into maybe the high of the previous days missing the whole point of this idea of getting the small money entry and if you really load the fucking wagon up here dude maybe you reload on your order block and you get in here but then he's saying that we should sell here because it came back to that i think that's what he's saying um sure i mean that's these are dramatic moves i, I don't know what time frame that is but Carry on. Let's let's hear the rest of his spiel. So, so um, in this example right here, yeah. there wasn't too much manipulation before moving down, but this was enough to blow my account up if you don't mind. Unmitigated before. Unmitigated. This has this gentleman has the very deep vocabulary. Unmitigated. Or uh, drop in further. So as you can see, as price moves further down and down, event down and down. Now he sounds like his vocab just dropped down to like, well, I'm just gonna say down and down and down and down and down or down. Eventually gets to a point where, you know, they call it capitulation. 
boy, she's just done going down. Now look at the little hesitation in here. This is the measured move theory, by the way. We get a price pulse down, we pause, and we re-rip. And this is also another example, and maybe people should do this that are having a problem, because it's one thing to put buy limits in here and capture this plungeola and dump everything to here and be up on this trade through this whole thing that it is to come in with sell stops and actually jump on this train or sell at the market every fucking... Dude, it's not like you can't do that, but you, when it gets down here, if you don't take profits... This is your trend entry to the downside. You're fucked because you just, and if you don't trail your stop, if you trail your stop, I guess they're going to stop you out here and you're going to make X, right? You didn't make it to the edge. That's fine. Rinse and repeat that trade over and over. And if you get really good at it and you know how to size it to get the maximum bang for the buck, that's your trade. I mean, that's just how it is. That's only one. There's so many trades in here and so many ways you'd have to, you could do it. And if you put in a sell limit, you're only going to get filled on these little wicks. So if you have sell limits trailing here during this phase of stalling, can we agree that this just rocketed down the first small body? Start putting in small, tight sell limits and tight sell stops. Whatever happens, no market orders, no market, you don't need it. Because these are your market orders where you're chasing auto chase, auto fill. Let the market decide. In your range trading it, well, your breakout range trading it because the sell limits are the range wick, the ultimate, really the, there's an order block in there, right? That wick is wicking up into some fucking order block on the one minute chart. It has to be because before the big drop, he said there's an up move. There's always an up move. There's a down move, and then it goes up. Well, this must be an order block back in here. I'm sure that if you go to the fucking three-minute chart, you look back, oh, I see the order block. This, to me, is the ultimate. Like, I'm surprised he didn't say, well, you see it here? See, this wick, just before this, this is the best ratio on the fucking planet on this chart. I mean, dude, at least Cherry picked the good trades. Yeah, dude, right here, see, we're getting real heavy here, see. We put a stop just about there. We make this ratio. So that's that, like 10 to 1, son. And we get out here. We know we got to get out here because this, this is where everything, all the drama started. Eh, it's not perfect. And this is, let's assume this is a five pip range for argument's sake. And what, you're not willing to sell from here and have sell limits that maybe don't fill here? I, so I say, how do I know when they're, they're not going to top tick Tommy it back to here? How do we know? that they're not going to do that and if i'm not going to babysit the market this is all based on not babysitting the market well let's just let it happen and if i'm going to build a position on pullbacks here i got a buy 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 never sell buy 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 every black candle i'm in 8k Maybe I add to my position. Just think of how complicated trading is, dude. You could, on this one chart, you could milk this fucking chart. You could cherry pick all the trades out here. It would look like this. Well, what I do is see, I see it's quiet. I put my sell stops in. I got my buy stops. A couple get triggered. No big deal. I just trade on stop entry. I buy, sell stops, buy stops. Okay, I stop me outside. Trail my stop. Still got sell stops in. Oh, would it go would it, small body put on the sell stops? Small body, sell stops get filled. Okay, we're down. Hopefully, I'm cashing out. Small body, put some buy stops in. Small body, buy stops. Small white body, buy stops. How about that? Small white body, buy stops. Continuation pattern. It's going up, it's drifting, buy stops in the small body, buy stop, buy stop, buy stop. Am I going to put sell stops in the small body? Okay, sell stops. Now we're going to lose a little bit of money because, but we don't get, we don't, we get a little bit chopped up here. But if we let, if we have wide enough stops on our stops, on our stop entry, and they happen to be in, say, a Bollinger Band or a, uh, just an envelope, my stops run an envelope here around the market. So I'm building this giant hedge. And when we blow out the top, if my ratios are even, well, it had to be three to one now. This is where it becomes a problem because now, well, do I have, am I getting whipsawed? Did I 
kind of get trapped into trades that were just based on a rule of, well, if I get a small body, I put a sell stop. And here, here's a really great head, a great, like, two small bodies in a row. Well, let's make two small bodies in a row. This is when you start to tweak the filters. Okay, if I see three small bodies on the row, the robot would just, I'm sure you could build a simple robot, let's hope, that says, if there's three 15-minute bars with a body that's less than eight pips, let's put on a hedge. And now you've made me take it to four. And when you take the robot to four, you have him put on a five more K. So that the tighter the criteria is, the bigger the position is, but that trade doesn't work out as much as the the bucket trades that have like a 15 pips stop to make 18 pips. It's really a break even in the real world and you just kind of have some of this commingled. It doesn't have to be that exact number, but the idea is that you're not trying to hit it out of the park all the time because you want to pay the rent. Now, if you really have your heart set on it, I would say build a position around this uh, big dramatic move and just don't overpay. Only trade on buy limits if you're looking for a, re a retracement. And if you're looking for a trend trade, which most people are trying to trend trade because they're waiting for it to come to this, back to the moving average or to their cloud or whatever their criteria is for the long-term trend. This is the logic, at least. Uh, it doesn't always work out because the market might have one last spike left in it and it's just going to take you out because you're trying to manage your risk with stops or the account can't handle it. It's too big a size for the account. That's the only obstacle in trading is that you just can't afford the trade that you're in. Uh, because if you traded a nano account with 10 grand in it, you just lose your mind. You wouldn't lose any money, really. I mean, you might lose $100 a week. You'd just lose your fucking mind. You'd be talking to yourself and you have five masks on and you'd all, you'd, you're, right, you're making your own boosters in your basement. You're boosting your game. They call it a bump, I think. <laughs> a cocaine version. Yeah, I need a bump. <laughs> I get a bump. I'm going to kind of fall asleep. Okay, let's go back to this fucking hair brain mentor. One of the offspring mentors, a mentor had a kid. Whether it's the time of the day, whether it's fundamentals, like a news event or something, it would just continue to keep on dropping and dropping. Now, eventually... Keep on keeping on. You know what I'm saying? Price has, has to come up and fill the liquidity void below it to eventually mitigate this order block. Now, this is exactly what... Now, that's not necessarily true. I believe that he's right about it. it's going to fill this vacuum, but it's not trying to mitigate oh, yeah, unfinished business up here. Had to come up and retest. Dude, this doesn't have to happen. It does not have to happen. It could just blow that shit out. There's nothing preventing this. I don't know how people would predict, think they could predict this stuff. But I suppose that's the, the, the dream here is that um, all these zigzags. What we see in this example here. Now, if you wanted to ask me, how do I actually... I do want to ask you if you just want to... I, do you mind if I ask you? The profit off this, how do I enter this trade? Yes, how do I? This is what you would do. There's a few ways of entering and I'm going to teach you how. I'm listening. The first way is to simply use the wicks. Now, I like to call this a wick entry. So it's entry type one. Uh, depending on how the market is moving, I will sort of determine whether I'm going to use entry type one, two or three. How it's moving? Um... But pretty much this is the safest bet. It's where you enter just straight off the wick, so not the body. Of course, you're looking for it to uh, to touch the body, but sometimes it goes... Sometimes? Uh-oh, this is a problem. I prefer certainty. Like, can I just get like a real straight answer? Goes straight to the... He's a politician. The wick and just keeps dropping. Straight to the wick. Your stop loss is just above the wick as well, or you could say above the area of or the point of interest, but usually just above the wick. Now, the second type is a body entry. This, um, at times, it doesn't happen. So, oof, I don't like that. Baby came over for dinner and uh, we had a couple of bears and it just didn't happen. At times, for example, you would see it would just go straight to the wick and then keep straight dropping. Straight to the wick, honey. Can we get straight to the wick? I'm just like. I'd like to tell you something about these order blocks. This one, of course, you're going to get high risk to reward because your stop loss is much tighter. Now your third... I bet the ranch on that one. Honey, I got to tell you something about the kids' college fund. Okay. 
this, I had this order box, see? And I knew, I knew I shouldn't have done this trade without asking first, but I put on a stop that would have cost, it cost me basically when I got stopped out, it's 40 grand on this stop. But honey, we could have made $4 million in 15 minutes. A type is where your stop loss is literally touching your wick. Ooh. Now, well, personally, my stop loss touches my wick. This is when I know I'm going to get stopped out. This is the way that I always teach my students as well. I teach my students. If they stop out your wick, you got to go to the hospital. Um, this entry is obviously a lot more risky because if you... Oof. I tell me about it. I lost my wick last time. If you do this type of entry, then you're more likely going to, you know, hit stop loss. Oof. But it really depends on how you have refined your point of interest. Your point of interest. Now... Very interesting. Uh, this is a topic that I want to go into much later on in my video series. Wow, but, he's got a series. But, uh, it comes to a certain point where once you refine to a you know a very good point of interest, you can kind of take this type of a approach where your risk to reward is very high because your stop loss is you know it's minimal, as you see in this uh, in this photo that I've got prepared. So very simple. Uh, this is the main type of order block. This is what you see okay. across Instagram, YouTube, whatever it may be. Across Instagram, I don't have Instagram yet. I got to get this Instagram. A YouTube order block as opposed to Instagram order block. Oh, the same thing. It's, don't worry, you're safe. All social media agrees with order block theory, if you don't mind. Pretty much what everyone put, put much what it might be. learns, especially in the beginning. Especially in the beginning. Later on, you change your order block a little bit. So moving on. Order block type two with a type two order block. Type two order block. Table for five. Uh, type two order entries. Now, this one is slightly more complicated because when you do look on the charts, uh, it might take a bit of time for you to adapt to it. You have to adapt to these things, but you're going to have to do it. Train your eyeballs. You get these special ICT glasses. They make you little cross sides, so you don't want to drive your car right after you use them, but that's how you see it. It's like the magic eye painting, see? But essentially, it's what I like to Essentially, it's what I like to call uh, eye torture. To call the engulfed order block because... Oh, the engulfed order block. <laughs> Yes, I remember that one. But we all know that if, if I got Solomon's at new highs, which I got to learn how to do that. <laughs> but I've, I, I try to sell, but I can't. It's just, I don't like it. It's too depressing. I, I'm, a, I'm a hoarder. I like to buy stuff and cape it. But if I put Solomon's up here and capture this thing, does it really matter if there's a fucking order block up here? <laughs> Come on, man. If I just canvas this whole area like a pig, does it really matter? I'm assuming anything that goes up must come down. Eventually, it does, see? No matter the color, no matter the candle, no matter where it is, the whole candle must engulf the next. Oh, shit. I got to wait for the engulfment, too? I don't know what's going to happen here. It's <laughs> pretty much what happens is the, um, the loss up move before the down move. So let's just say we're in a downtrend. It's the loss up move before the down move. However, oh, last, I could tell you saying the loss up move. This, uh, this order block has to be engulfed by the next one. So what that means, the whole body has to be co body? covered by the next one or, Ooh, or at least in the down direction. So as you can see, let's look at example one. In this example, did I miss something? Did he say put a just sell the market on the red candle or? We've got the standard order block, which is the gray box on the left or the top left. That's what you could have entered on. Now what we're looking, I could have, but I didn't. Looking at here is the engulfed order block, so it doesn't matter whether it's a buy candle or a sell candle, whether it's gray or black, whether it may be. Our um. Our key takeaway here is that the whole candle must be engulfed by the next one. I like that. That's my favorite buzz phrase. The key takeaway is um, don't touch your wick to your order block. One. So let's open by. Oh, and the open of the body. I get right into the open. Let's look at what I highlighted in blue. So it's the last, uh, it's the last candle at the top. Yeah. But then the next one is engulfed uh -huh. in red, as I've highlighted. Now let's look at example two. Um, oh. This one is 
could be looking at the wick as well, for example. Yeah. So you've got that blue one that I've highlighted at the All top. Right. And then the next candle completely engulfs it downwards. Right. So this is just another way of entering. Uh, what you're going to realize, and please guys, backtest this in your charts. He didn't say how to enter yet. He keeps saying this, this is what about entering. You're going to see that it does work. You know, it appears a lot of times and this is where price rejects off pretty much. But you're going to pretty much most time. To realize when you when you have this type of entry, yeah. Entry, your uh your entries are going to be a lot more refined than the standard order block let's Ooh. see an example now Stop. if we were looking at something like this on the chart on the right you're going to see uh i'm just telling you we're in an uptrend we know that fundamentals are back in it as well which is very important uh, let's just say we have liquidity to the upside that we're aiming for so that's the checklist pretty much already done for that part now, in terms of entry, we know we're looking for buys. So which area are we going to be looking for? Now, we could go for the order block or the, you see this last uh, last blue candle in uh, this last black candle before the up move. You know, it's really, it's really massive. Could be 50 pips, could be 100 pips. Now, what I would say is usually I wouldn't enter off this because it's such a large area and then the risk to reward you know, it might be just a one-to-one, -one, one to two, which is still good. But of course, we want to be able to refine our entries a bit more. That's exactly. But position size would dictate what the real risk is. If it's too many pips for you, then you just go to a different instrument. If you have to trade a certain size per ticket, it's going to be a problem because you can't adjust. If you trade a 10K with a 10-pip stop, and you trade a 1K with a 100-pip stop, same amount of money risk. So if you have this kind of um, ability to get the, the size refined, then you can do these broad, um, cover these broad areas. And you can sleep at night if you're trying to make money. What if the market didn't come down? And by the way, he missed the vacuum fill entry. There's some, imagine, there's, I wouldn't call them order blocks, but th what the term they use is liquidity anything below this low there's liquidity so this order block shit is just bullshit if you say there's liquidity i agree below here this is the deep this is the lonely wick just like this is just like that is when they when they trip trip that zone like when it caught carves into here and i don't know he says it's an uptrend but dude even people that, so you just, like, okay, so look at all those great cells up there, man. Just wicks up in and then drifts sideways. The breakout traders get in here, putting, they make money. But why are the liquidity, if these, if this is the floor, these wicks looking forward, when the market crashes into this, why can't I just put buy limits in here? There's so many trade plans. Why limit yourself to this stupid ass fucking you really waited so you waited for the market to come down here you couldn't see the fact that beneath here was what where there was a great scalp if you loaded the wagon you got buy limits in this whole zone and if they take this out i've done videos on this where i play back the market and i'm saying we're gonna get in here we're gonna get in here well it doesn't always make it down here but as you're watching it unfold, you're like, man, if they ever hit this price order, then that's going to be a fucking entry. But here you buy, you buy, you buy. As soon as they take out this high, sellers come in because of that they're selling here because this is a, a really kind of the only lonely last known sw swing high here where you go up and then down one more time to, to say stuff. Well, this must be the order block here looking forward in here. What if the market never comes back? I mean, are you going to sit here waiting for the market to come back to some order block? I like how he's got this cropped out, like, I guess, because I guess you to, can't tap too much data in here. Because look at these fucking trades in here. My God, look at that. There's so much going on in this chart. It's just blow your brains out. If you're waiting to buy the break out of this, it broke out, right? Well, where do people usually get in? A retest of the breakout. Okay, you get in. 
you get in. These are all winning trades. If you're looking to make X amount of pips, there's also this vacuum. There's always a vacuum forming. Anytime the market goes sideways, crush in. Now there's a vacuum on top. We crush up into it. It fills that. Comes. This is supposed to be the double top that becomes a bottom. I talked to this guy in a... I think the same guy I talked to on Discord. He sounds like the same guy. And he says, well, yeah, this is top becoming bottom. It didn't work out. Yeah, it was because in the bigger fractal picture, you've got this volatility is drying up, creating a triangle. This vacuum's been stacking up. There's another, if you're going to, uh, instead of drawing this wedge, if you just isolate the last known highs, you're getting, the market's getting very quiet, and it gets very, very quiet. And it's like, dude, this is reaching an apex. There's no way around that. Now, if you could just read the market the way it is, right now it's screaming up. But I would just naturally put, if I was trying to get involved in a any kind of trade, I got sell limits up here, and I got buy limits down here waiting for something to fill. If they, as soon as they fill me, I go, oh, okay. Then I'm like, I'm never going to, I really couldn't try to avoid trading at the market because I should be clever enough to put my limits in front run it. Unless I'm going to do it where I say, it's the end of the day, it's down, let's get in on something. It's four hours, it's down, let's get in on something. But typically, I've just got, I'm just got limits down there and up above more down below, more buy limits below because I'm going to sell if it goes up. Because it's a trade. It's not an investment. It's a trade. Somebody, somebody said in the comments, uh, is Forex a good investment to get into? I, I wouldn't think it's an investment, but I guess investing time and torture and locking up margin money. And do you, I, so when it comes to here, I got to get out of this floor. I got to take something off here. I don't know if it's going to fucking go to here. I don't know that because look at this. This is really resistance. This thing plunges down. Holy shit. Now, if you did buy this at the market on the clock, I mean, at the market, so you buy, you're not just going to buy as it's plunging. That's stupid. Buy if it's down. This is a rule. It's down for an hour buy. It's down an hour buy. But they filled you on limits anyways. Okay. When it comes back to here, you got to get out on something. Now it comes back to here. Maybe you're getting out along the way. Do the same trade over again. Buy limits. They fill you this time, but they don't fill you to the bottom. And at the market, you only do the big buys at the market. I only buy at the market if it's really down hard. If it's going sideways, I'm not going to buy here. When it's going sideways, no. If it's down hard, I buy. So down at the market, at the market, at the market, on the clock. And then I'm never going to put buy stops in because I bought at the market. And I'm getting filled on limits. And I'm getting filled really big in here. And this whole time, this first market order, I'm not, I'm not happy that this is underwater. But if I if I uh, assume that this vacuum is going to fill at least to here, because I know this price exists, but it goes beyond, that these market orders have to have wide fucking stops to survive the plunge, or they're just going to get stopped out. But having the opportunity to put in orders here because I can see this exists. This, in my opinion, has been filled. This does not exist. This pivot doesn't matter anymore. Once this top, double top didn't become a bottom and it destroyed it, you can't carry this. There's this guy called uh, So Darn Easy Forex Trader. He's just a dick. He's like, oh, you can't talk about my videos and I'm copyrighted. I'm like, go fuck your copyright. I wish these people would just go hump their copyrights. I, I don't give a fuck. You're a dumb shit. So, um, what, oh, he takes this shit and carries it forward for like five years of the, this price doesn't mean shit anymore. This has been debated and fucked. This is like, dude, it's, there's no insurrection here, okay? Shut the fuck up. 
I'm getting sidetracked again. Get back to this fucking idiot. I'm a mentor's mentor. Was it Diamond? Diamond Net Capital? Capital. We do capital here. I'm a mentor's mentor. My students believe in me. They like me on Instagram and TikTok too. Exactly what we've done here. We looked for our income. We looked and we looked and we looked. Golf candle. So for the one we entered off, the blue, the blue, blue line, as you can see, the blue line, isn't that for hockey? The next candle after the after the the lowest point or the lowest candle, you can. Because you tell me, you babysat these fucking entries. He still hasn't said how he gets in these fucking trades, so I can't take it. I'm gonna go to fucking hyperspeed and I'm just gonna go fucking watch a guy named Horflick. I tortured my audience long enough with this. See, that I completely engulfed it to the upside. So what did price do? Price came straight back down to our point of interest. So we, uh, for our point of interest, what we point would of interest. usually do is highlight the whole area. Then uh, we look at our points of interest. This might be a 15 minute or a five minute candle, whichever it may be. And then eventually we got whichever to, maybe. to this entry. So what does the entry look like? A few ways of entering as well. Like last time, uh, like in the last example that I was explaining, one way is just entering off the open of the body, as we've just done right there, and then stop losses past the wick. So as you can see, we got to a pretty nice risk reward there. So you get a, you, you you wait for the opening of the body, and you pull the trigger right on the open, right on the open, because you know it's going to engulf. So what you do is you get it right in there. Is he kidding? <laughs> this fantasy trader number 58. How to fantasy trade. I mentor fantasy traders. Then another way is uh, is entering off the wick. So what this would mean, uh, this is an, another example. So if you had entered off the previous mitigation, this is exactly what it would have looked like. So this one. Mitigation. Whereas this one is the open. Holy mitigation, Batman. Of the body. This one is the wick of the whole candle. Okay. Now, what I would suggest to you guys, and if you are taking notes, obviously take this in. I'm taking notes. Sonny, I'm writing so fast. Goddamn brain out of ink writing about you. To account, you would usually enter off this wick when the candle is very small. When the whole uh, candle is small. How so do I get in? Enter off the wick? How? On a stop entry? I mean, what am I doing here? Well, I call my psychic hotline, see? As you can see, this one is much wider. If we were entering off the wick, you know, it would be a much larger um, much larger uh, stop loss. But for this one right here, it's more minimal. Uh, therefore, when you're entering off this, you're going to get a much nicer risk to reward. Now, I'm going to miss this trade here. Why? Because, see, this entry, don't you want to get in here? Don't queue up to no order block. Can't do that it's a trade, son. It don't order. It don't line up to no. Don't do that. This is off the tape. I can't trade this entry. I'd trade it. You know why? Lonely wick. I got limits in here, dude. I'm buying this too. I'm buying this. Why? You see, here's the vacuum, son. It ain't about this shit, dude. It's this. You want to buy everything below here, see? This water block shit is a fucking joke. He doesn't even say, yeah, you should have your limits set right in here. When the market's here, you should have a buy limit here. When the market's here, you should have a buy limit here. When the market is fucking here, you should have a buy limit here. You know what? Water block. But these people don't do this shit. I guarantee fucking to you, ICT's not got an order block here. There's no fucking way. He probably babysitting like, oh yeah, look, it's coming down, okay. Oh, I should have bought here. I was hoping it was going to come back to the order block of the last order block, and he did no fuck. But I bet on the three-minute chart, there's an order block right here. Yeah. I run 48 time frames. That's how I get all the order blocks. I got a whole, actually I've been collecting order blocks. I don't know if they're worth anything, but I've been collecting them. Now let's keep going. This is what the entry would look like. Now guys, just uh, in terms of everything that I'm presenting to you, of course, this is my presentations from all of my mentorship and everything like that. If you are. <laughs> it's from my mentorship. See, I tell you, they're how to get it in the market. It's when I reveal everything. I should sign up with this SMC guy. Hey, Mr. SMC, can I be an order blockologist like you? Are you interested in something like that? Then most of the information is pretty much on uh, my Diamonds Capital Instagram. So if you want to look more into it, you know, I've got the Diamonds Capital trading channel that's coming out soon. So it's going to be pretty much all the entries I'm taking and everything like that. This one obviously won't be. Here we go. He's going to reveal his secret, his secret sauce. 
won't be for everyone that's looking for mentorship, but if you are looking for mentorship. I prefer a masseuse, actually, like a girl that could, like, sit on my back. I mean, the bigger the better. Then this is exactly, you know, I provide everything as a package. So you've got... Package? I not see nothing about that. Mentorship course packages. Oh, I think I want the whole... Can I get a discount if I get everything? Pretty much everything in the trading channel that I've just described. And then you've got the technical course, the fundamental course. 40 videos? Fucking aim. My head just exploded. It said 45 videos. Man, this guy's not fucking one-on-one -on -one mentorship. Holy shit. Like a tubing call. Course, and then everything else that comes with it. So Discord group. Fucking A. Man, I'm in. If you've got any questions. Yeah, I got questions. What can we start making money? Mostly, I'm going to be uh, talking about it later on in the month. But for now, uh, I'll just, you know, just keep that in mind. I'm keeping it in mind. Dude, I'm keeping I got a notepad right in front of me the whole time. I'm journaling this shit. Cut it out. But yeah, let's look at the third type of order block with entries. So oh, the third type. That's is my favorite time. The third time, baby. You love me now, don't you? Order block, bitch. You. There's one that is pretty well known in the smart money concept. Sort of community. Smart money concept. Now you dumb, up, dumb, money, <laughs> dumb money people are allowed to sign up with my mentorship. There's no surcharge for dumb money signups. See, what I would say is the closest thing that I would see to support and resistance, but it's more pinpoint. So let's pinpoint, pinpoint entries to the pip. Fuck ICT, he's too sloppy. I'm to the half pip. What it is, it's a previous order block that has broken through and we are now returning back to it. Usually it's most effective when price is moving very bullish or bearish with a minimal. <laughs> it's most effective, no shit. You know what, so, dude, look, trust me. Sometimes it never comes back to no order block. This is why even the, like was describing before is this fucking blockheaded chase the market shit totally works when the market is bursting like a fucking pregnant whore. Pullbacks, i.e. not returning to premium and discount areas such as i.e. For example, i.e. He's reading the Biden script. I, not returning to premium discount area. He just said area. Now I thought this was going to be a precise entry course. Damn it, this fucker. Standard order block. Standard so, order block entry, if you don't mind, sir, please. Don't hurt me this time. Just to not confuse you guys, what that pretty much means is when price does not return all the way back up to the premium areas. So if we were... I like a premium entry, please. We're entering off uh, pretty much this, what you would call the breaker block. <laughs> the breaker block. Man, this shit's too much. Come on, man. How much is this mentorship going to cost me? Is it half price, 75 bucks a month? You would expect that price, you know, is moving very bearish or very bullish, and it's not very bullish. Very, very. Define very. Well, pretty steep. Like 21 degrees? Well, it depends how much you scrunch the chart up. Like, if you scrunch your chart up a lot, you put the scrunch meat, the scrunch uh, button on, you get real steep. It looks vicious. Not pulling back all the way to premium areas or discounted areas premium areas so how do we enter off this uh as you can see it's the same logic break a block um well, i would say it's through liquidity void so this is something that i'm going to explain in another video when i'm talking about liquidity voids or imbalances uh but for this one pretty much he has to be trading at the market every one of these trades is this we've got the the sell side liquidity let me just annotate this if i can so here we've got sell side liquidity right there we've got this imbalance all the way from here now if we're looking at entries this personally would be my favorite type of entry but if i'm seeing that it's a certain type of day let's just say it's new york um new york and london crossover at this time i'm expecting that price is eventually going to pull back uh, to the upside so we're only looking for buys at the moment now because of the time i'm expecting that we're going to pull back around uh, around now where it's 130 or between 130 or 230 whatever time it may be so i want to look for an entry around this time and what do i have i've got a breaker block right here which is exactly what we went straight into now like i said you always want to pair this with a liquidity void as i just explained let me just clear that. The liquidity void was just between here. Now we look. We want to look for an entry between there and this is our breaker block, right there. Okay. Why? So you could buy. I don't know why this. How's this guy doing it? Like, how are you waiting for these dumb shit trades? So I have buy limits here. I can already see my trade. I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy. Market rockets down. Bye, bye, bye. Cash out to the floor. And if I want to hold some of it, it it just depends. 
I'm not going to expect it to come back to this thing. Oh, this is where these people are saying that it should go to it. No, make it there till here. And I'm going to buy below here now. And I was planning on buying all the way down. And I was planning to buy below here. I was planning to buy below here. But this guy is being so picky that he, he misses out on this beautiful plunge, rip, plunge, uh, this is less pips, but like engulfs the floor a little bit. But if you're building a position and you got buy limits here and you're like, dude, when they come back to here, I'm getting out of everything. But these haven't filled yet. Don't forget, these haven't filled yet because you cash out to here. You, they come in deeper. Maybe take something off here, but I, don't, I wouldn't because it's too small of a bounce. What I'm really looking for is to let it fill up just let the market fill you this is the most automatic if you really believe in buying this and doing this stuff <laughs> this top become a bottom down here i talked about this in videos a bunch of times this is the top inside the bottom you want to call an order block i'm not waiting for that shit i'm not going to put a giant position on here and wait for that fucking premium entry to me this is all premium buy area See this big fucking hole? Just like this fucking hole. If I was really aggressive, I'm buying here on limits, dude. Buy, 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 buy. And I can cash this out. It ain't coming back to that floor necessarily. And if I want to hold the whole fucking position, think about this. I know it's unbelievable. Buy limits, buy limits, buy limits. Trust me, the stop is wide. I'm a swing trader come back to the floor and beyond start selling above here you're selling above this high for this trade you're selling above this high for this it, it, to, it, to even have a bias ICT is such a dumb shit he talks about market bias dude if you're trading like wick to wick like this liquidity zones you don't need a fucking direction you just need to fucking keep trading it is so stupid what these people say. Dude, you may think this is going up. You know how many good sells there are in here? You're selling above this. Scalp to here, and then it goes even further. You're selling this vacuum. You're selling this fucking vacuum. If you're that ballsy, of course, you had to wait this long to get paid. But you're selling above here to make that. You're selling above here to make that. And if you do did never cashed out you have sell limits all the way to here when it gets to here you are break your the break even on that last trade but you're up on all these trades but if you're really looking for it to take out this which is the giant in golf i mean obviously the fractal the fractal facts are like this you got these vacuum here it's just like the, this is the bigger vacuum. You see all the holes in the market itching to get filled. So you got holes. That's why the trend line break is the entry. Because if you have a trend line here, and this is a wedge. The volatility is drying up. You're trapped under the floor. I call it trapped under the floor. No, it's auction too low. Liquidity, unfair value. Call it whatever the fuck you want. Dude, you got to put the tickets in. And to, 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 to say that there's this order cock down here it's just so silly well it's an order block here see that was the, oh, you do they're all over the fucking place really come on this is harebrained shit and it's taken the one makes it harebrained is taken from the idea that oh well you know this is what uh <laughs> This is uh, price delivery. Every the secret of price delivery they won't talk about because they don't want to take you to jail. So onto entries. Uh, this is exactly how you would enter stop loss uh, below the breaker block. If you really wanted to be conservative and take that type of approach, then you would put the stop loss uh, much lower. Say for example, uh, down below the lowest point in this range. Uh, so yeah, pretty so, much a breaker so, yeah. block paired with the standard order block. So this is another example. That you so yeah, just saying an order block doesn't help, dude. Just repeating the same shit doesn't help my mentorship. You're not mentoring me properly. I feel un under under mentored. Now, what I would say is that, and I've said this in many a video, and I trade like this myself, 
because I have to. When it closes under the floor, and you have to be here for this trade to pull the trigger, if they close under the floor, you're locked in. This is the the fake breakout trap entry where it's like, um, it really didn't break the wick, but I'm saying that it's fucking rocketing down. Explanation point under the floor, just like this. You close above this. You sell because you're locked above. If you don't get out here on something back into this top, so that's when it gets dicey because you got to take profits on here. The theory is that if you get into this void, say I put a buy limit here, and I got buy limits stacked up here, and they rip down in, I'm expecting this to happen, that these tickets filled, 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 and then no fill here, but then where am I cash out? I could take the whole position off here, or if I think that it's going to be vicious here, or I just let it go. Sometimes you have to let your profits run, but at least I'm up, right? I'm up more than, now here it did not fill. So sell limits here didn't fill. Maybe one little ticket, but I got sell limits above here. And they don't fill till later on. See, this is still a valid entry point, just like buy limits here. And I would be long right now. I would have started buying below here and I'd be long right now and I'd be underwater and I'd buy a bunch here on when we got to here. And if it gets here and when it goes down here, I got enough money that I'm going to buy down here. Seriously. I've, 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 ex this is the style I trade because I don't want to have to babysit the market every time. But if I saw this close and I was a sniper and all that, like it just went closed above here, trapped above the wick closes up a, it's extreme. I'm just locked in. Uh, selling above here. Selling above here. Everything above here is, that's the loneliest wick here. And, of course, then the reason why you take profits there is because when it comes back to that, so this top-bottom thing, it's happening all the time. It probably only takes about 20 candles for you to get this. It could take more to get that extreme wick that we can all see as we look back into the chart everybody's aware of it and who's most aware of it is the robots that run trailing stop based on last low and they keep scooching up these stops and so do humans to manage positions should they go wrong the orders the market's fueled by all the stacked up tickets in there but look at and you could be one of those stacked up tickets break a block we can identify as being over here and you can be a winning retail trader yeah so this one is the breaker block that we've identified. So this is the zone. Then when you look at the standard order block, this is the large order block that we're looking at. This one right here. So when you pay, I can't take it. So um, he's not going to tell us. Uh, so I can't take the torture. I thought I could get through this video. I thought he was going to say, well, what you do here say is you no, never going to tell us. Where's his, um, his mentorship, how much does it cost here? About a bit. So he's got no link? Well, that's not going to work out. How am I going to join his mentorship? He doesn't have a community thing, does he? Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Smart Money. He's only got two videos. Wow, he's got 650 subscribers? Shit. So, uh, hmm, wow. Look at that. Ultimate Beginner's Guide. The smart money trading. I'm getting smarter watching it. This guy's really, he's really busted loose, hasn't he now? Oh, well. I don't think he'll sue me. He's not big enough. Anyways. I thought I'd torture everybody with this. This is too much. It'd be about too much with this order block shit. Dude, where do I get in? Like, come on, man. Smart money concepts. Yeah, I'm waiting for this 15 minutes. Honey, I'll be there in a minute. I got smart money. I'm waiting to, waiting for an order block. I, I went on eBay and I ordered an order block and then I got one from Amazon. I'm like, the Amazon order block was very expensive. A lot more than I thought it'd be. Didn't know where to put my stop. 